All right. Happy Thursday morning to you all. I am uh, leaving the warehouse now. I've been here for two days straight. <laughs> As in, I never left. I slept here at the warehouse. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been trying to reorganize things and get uh, productive again. Uh, haven't really been working enough to... Uh, be as comfortable financially as I need to be, so uh, it's time to liquidate a lot of this stuff in here. Hopefully I don't have to liquidate the whole place and get rid of it, but uh, definitely the contents in there have got to go uh, make it a usable space. So anyway, uh, I'm getting a little cub out on the road. It hasn't even been fired up in nine or ten months. It's been a while. It's going on almost a year. Uh, I put a fresh battery in it. One of the previous videos I did was replacing the battery, and I really haven't ridden it much since then. Uh, it's still insured and all that, but my inspection and uh, tag are way out of date, so I'm going to take this thing over today and get the uh, state inspection done on it so I can get the uh, registration renewed. Uh, but I'm happy to report that when I hit the start button, it just de -de -de turned right over. Uh, no problem. So that uh, lithium battery that I put in here is uh, still doing great after eight Plus, you know, probably 10 months worth of storage. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Anywho, get this trusty, dusty little steed on the road. Man, it is dirty. It's been in that warehouse forever. So, off we go. I still have not fixed the uh, slow leak in the rear tire. <laughs> so, every time I uh, roll this thing around in the warehouse, uh, it's just flat, flat, flat. Uh, it only holds air for about a day, two days, whatever. So maybe uh, maybe this weekend I'll have time to pull that rear wheel off. Oop, first gear. Uh, <laughs> haven't ridden in a while. Eh? Uh, I'll have time to pull that rear wheel off and reseat the tire or figure out what is leaking. I'm not sure what's going on with it because it was a brand new tire. I had it mounted by cycle gear because I didn't want to scratch up my rim any further. And... Uh, it just doesn't hold air, so I don't know if it's not fully seated on the bead, uh, if the uh, valve stem is a little loose or something like that. I'm not really 100% sure. So I'll dig in that, see if I can figure it out. I've got a, uh, a big tank, uh, like a, uh, what is it, uh, one of those uh, drink container things, you know, you, uh, almost like an ice chest, but it's metal galvanized steel. Oh, man, this sucks. This is very hard to see. Uh galvanized steel pail basically big one though so i think it's big enough uh width wise that i can tank the tire the whole wheel everything i'll uh I'll fill it up with water and dunk the wheel in there and roll it slowly and see if i can figure out where the air bubbles are coming from and that'll give me an indication of what's going on i have the tire irons and the levers and everything to pull that uh, tire off of there obviously but i <laughs> I've already scarred up this rim so badly on uh, the cannonball when we were doing uh, parking lot tire changes and everything else. Uh, the black rim around the, the outside of the, the wheel uh, is very prone to scratching. So I'm taking a lot of paint off of it. I don't think I have very many deep gouges in the aluminum itself, but the, uh, the pretty black finish ain't so pretty no more. Uh, it feels good to ride this thing. I haven't ridden it so long. I haven't ridden anything. Uh, you know, I've, I've taken the Navi around to the grocery store and for two work commutes back and forth from home to the warehouse here. And uh, I've ridden the Rebel about as much, you know, just a couple of uh, short trips uh, in and out for a work commute. That's it. Um, but I haven't been doing any riding, and man, I miss it. This is the longest I've ever gone in my whole life uh, since I was five or six years old when I started riding. I was, you know, I was about six, I guess. Uh, this is the longest I've gone abstaining from riding. Uh, I think the longest I ever went before this was after a real bad... Uh, supercross accident that screwed up my back uh, and I didn't ride for uh, maybe four months because uh, I lost a lot of sensation in my uh, legs and my feet I couldn't really walk couldn't do a lot of stuff uh, but 
I, I was so anxious to get back on the bike I would, uh, I would suffer through it and that's kind of where I am now I'm not as bad as far as the uh, the lower back this time as I was back in my early 20s but uh, my shoulders and neck and the numbness in the hands that's uh, that's a problem man I love this thing <laughs> forgot how much I love this little thing feels like riding a BMX bike motorized BMX bike Yeah, I gotta say, it's probably been a year, almost a year since I've ridden this thing home. Uh, it's been in the warehouse for so long now. Do some maintenance on it. Uh, I need to look at my notes and figure out when my last oil change was. I usually print a little sticker right here uh, that tells me last and next for oil change. And I didn't print it last time, but I did record it, so... I need to uh, look at my notes, print a sticker for it. I'll go through. Uh, I have not been riding it a lot uh, anyway because of uh, the timing chain, idler, wheel, and all that. I know that these uh, 125 motors get a little bit worn or loose on that timing chain tensioner, so I didn't want to uh, risk the timing chain slipping or you know detonating the top end of the motor or anything like that if that uh, idler fails this bike has got you know 15 2 on the odometer but it's actually a lot more than that it's 16 and a half or more uh, with the 6.25 percent discrepancy because of the front sprocket so I need to pull the jug off of this thing and replace that idler wheel and the tensioner and probably the chain while I'm in there just you know refresh the whole thing but that means I'm opening up the engine and I've always wanted to you know keep this thing sealed up as long as possible because once I get in there I know inevitably I'm going to start doing modifications and upgrades and you know big bore kit and cam and you know, everything else so I've been trying to keep it original uh, and I might be able to maintain that discipline uh, and just get in there and do that one thing but you know, first rule of business, if you've already got an engine open, go ahead and refresh what is easy on the top if you're doing a top end job. So I might lap the valves, I'll check the cam, and uh, I might even re-ring it. I don't think I would need a piston or anything, uh, but I'll, I'll check the cylinder wear, you know, make sure the wear patterns are good, make sure the piston uh, skirt doesn't have any nasty scuffing or anything like that on it, and uh, I'll... Uh, potentially hone out the cylinder and re-ring it. We'll see. I thought about getting the high compression piston for this thing. It's still a 125cc, but it's got a different uh, dome shape and it raises the compression up to, I think, 11 and a half to 1 or something. It's pretty high. And apparently the piston weight is the same. Everything's the same. I don't know if it's a genuine Honda part. Nice job. Out of four lanes, you pick the one with somebody in it. Uh, I don't recall if it's a Honda part or not. I, I seem to remember finding it through one of the Japanese sites, and it looked like a Honda original red box and all that, so I don't know. I would need a higher torque starter, that's for sure, because uh, I don't think this starter would have the umph to spin over the motor with a lot more compression on it. Uh, obviously the injector would need to be changed or the fuel map would need to be modified a little bit for the extra uh, power, but uh, everything else should remain the same and as long as it's about the same weight then the engine balance shouldn't suffer. It's going to generate a little bit more heat, of course. But I think that would still be within the 
capability of the factory jug to uh, dissipate all that heat. Wouldn't need an oil cooler and all that. So if I decide to do the big bore kit on this one, which I might, it'll probably be the uh, Yumanashi 143cc kit. Uh, there are a couple of other 143s out there, but the one I'm looking for uh, is going to have the oil cooler loop on the head. So I could upgrade the oil pump and uh, put an oil cooler on there to just help keep engine temperatures under control because it's a, it's a small engine and uh, relatively limited cooling capacity based on its head mass and uh, cylinder mass and all that so help keep it cool keep it from self-destructing mounting the oil cooler in there is pretty tight I've seen uh, a few bigger ones like the uh, Kitako Neo 181 uh, and they'll put a little oil cooler on the front of the motor just above the head uh, and it barely barely fits in here you know inside the leg shield area in the front uh, I just wonder how close it is to the front fender and all that it's gonna be a pretty tight fit and those, those Kitako, you know, the, when you go that big, like the 181, you're talking about an expensive engine upgrade right there. Uh, a couple thousand bucks and change once it's all said and done. And that's, you know, that's always chasing diminishing returns. It's, you're trying to force a, an engine and a motorcycle into a performance category that it was never designed for. You've got to increase everything else, all the surrounding components, so clutch, driveline, brakes, you know, cooling, fueling, everything has all got to be uh, increased to support that, so I don't know that it would be a good idea. Definitely not a uh, wise uh, cost choice. Could be fun. Yeah. Having 20 horsepower or so on a little bike like this probably scoots right down the road the other thing I want to do with this when I get into doing the maintenance is uh, rebuild the forks and I might actually put a, uh, a fork upgrade kit in it from uh, YSS or somebody like that and do a you know cartridge emulator kind of a scenario those PD valves are very good in smaller forks like the PCX and stuff like that. So I imagine they'll work great in these two. Uh, these are half forks. They're not full height. Uh, you know, the tree doesn't come all the way up. So they're stubby forks. But that YSS kit, you can get just the PD valves alone or you can get the full kit with the springs and uh, like adjustable top caps and all that. So I might look into that. Last one I ordered wasn't terribly expensive. I think it was, you know, 150 bucks or something. That's not bad. But at the very least, these forks need pulled apart and uh, the fluid changed out and all that because it's, uh, what is it, five years old now almost. And it's got a bunch of really hard, brutal miles on it. So, supposed to have a really nice weekend. And uh, Kevin, Bikes and Pizza sent me a note this morning on Discord saying that he's thinking about coming down to Houston this weekend because the weather's going to be nice. Uh, he wants to take the uh, Eliminator 450 out on a road trip and bring it down and show it to me. So I'll uh, be looking forward to that if he makes it down. I haven't really done anything social in, you know, forever except for what, two weeks ago when uh, Neil came in town and we went camping for one day. Oh, look at that guy. Man, car hauler just came flying out of that side road. Never slowed down, never looked. He was doing 25 when he hit that intersection. Damn. That's why I never ride in the rightmost lane if I can avoid it, because people here in Houston are terrible about uh, blowing stop signs and ride on red and stuff like that. Man. They look at the intersection from eighth mile back and if they don't see cars going through there they just assume it's empty and blast through without even slowing down crazy
and what's terrible is if you don't uh, behave that same way and blow stop signs you get people flying right up behind you and uh, will rear end you if you actually come to a full stop at a red light or a stop sign because they're just so accustomed to everyone rolling through it at at least 10 miles an hour <laughs> uh, yeah welcome to Houston when I was growing up that used to be called a California stop you know, everybody knew that from uh, California drivers not coming to full stops at stop signs or right on red and just rolling through it at, you know, five or ten miles an hour. But, you know, everything's bigger in Texas, so uh, that means our California stops are the, uh, the Houston rolling stop at 25 plus. Ugh. In a lot of my early videos, people used to give me all kinds of sh** when I would just barely roll through an intersection at less than walking speed you know I, I get the bike down to balance that's it you know I'll, I'll come to a full stop or maybe moving you know one mile per hour something just enough to maintain upright to balance and uh, then I'll roll through after I look both directions you know it's the whole no footer no footer you know try not to put your feet down thing uh, and people would blast me for that, you know. Oh, nice stop, you know. Oh, uh, here you are talking about people driving bad. You don't even stop. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Rolling through a stop sign at barely walking speed uh, is a completely different scenario than uh, never even looking and blasting through it at 15, 20 miles an hour. Totally different scenario. Because at walking speed, I can still nail the brakes and put my feet down you know I'm, I'm looking to make sure nothing's coming obviously because I'm not protected I'm a motorcyclist that can be nerfed right off the road so gotta be careful man I miss this thing so much fun to ride yeah I need to fix the rear tire that's really what stopped me from riding it was that leaky rear tire and I've just I was busy and had other things going and didn't uh, didn't get around to fixing that tire so I was riding other stuff so I need to fix the tire man uh oh we've got flashing lights hopefully the whole intersection isn't closed hmm bro, bro. can we go can we get through What's going on? Yeah, looks like we can get through. Oh, stuck truck, that's it. Can we sneak? Can we sneak? Oh, uh, he's my linebacker. <laughs> well, I'll sneak out if there you guys can't go. Going, 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 going. Let's get rear-ended by this guy. It's time to move out of the big city. I've got to figure out a plan and uh, money and logistics for that. I've just got to get it done. I, I need to get out of Houston. It's too big. It's too busy. It always has been, but uh, the last three plus years have just gotten much more aggressive and much more dangerous than they've ever been and it's compounding it's just a dangerous place to be for traffic for work for society for health <laughs> you name it i grew up in a rural area and i'm ready to get back to the burbs man hell i'd be game for uh, even living out in the sticks. Forget the suburbs, go further out. Less people, less aggression, less frustration, you know. Everybody in the big cities is so wound up and angry all the time now. Nobody can relax, be human, not be angry at their fellow man. Tough way to live. 